thanks for being here. I'm, uh, I'm living in my friend's laundry room. <laughs> right now while I'm chasing my dream, this is it. <laughs> Thank you, I'm living in my friend's laundry room. I, I, I sleep by the dryer. I sleep by the dryer where the cat eats. <laughs> Cat likes wet food too, he eats wet food. <laughs> That's what I hear in the morning. And, and at night, he eats two times a day. Every time I hear that noise, I'm reminded, remember, you wanna be, you wanna be a comedian, you wanna chase your dream? You sleep in your friend's laundry room by the dryer where the cat eats. <laughs> I live in a house, it's, it's, it's three guys and, and, and this one cat, and none of us have health insurance. But for some reason, the cat gets to go see the vet like every six months. He goes. It's unbelievable. We drive little George to go get an MRI, it's crazy. Puts his little cat arm in there. And he gets, it's negative, it's a negative MRI. What the fuck are we doing here? I asked the guy, I'm like, you mind if I stick my head in that machine for like 50 bucks? I got some issues in my, ringing in my ear. He's like, no, that's for the cat. Get your head out of there. You don't have health insurance. It's unbelievable. Something happens to me, I gotta just like go to bed early and get, get a good night's sleep. <laughs> I'm stuck giving myself a self-examination. That's what I gotta do. If something's wrong, I give myself a ball exam. I guess it's gonna happen in my balls. I don't know. It, that's where disease starts in your nuts, I think. I'm supposed to give myself a testicle exam because I'm 35 now. It's time for the testicle exam. What a morning that is. Thank you. I don't know why there's applause for that. What a morning that is. You're, you feel, you're supposed to wait till your balls are long and feel around for lumps in the shower. What? what? What am I feeling for? It's all lumps. Bag of lumps. It's all kinds of cords and cables that run through your testicles. I don't, what's a lump and what's a cable? I don't know. Is that, a, what, what, is that an ethernet cable? Is that a little connector piece? There's a little light blinking in there. Am I supposed to unplug that and plug that back in? I don't wanna die lumpy nuts. No offense to anybody who's died of lumpy nuts. I had a friend pass away and, uh, you know, you never know how you're gonna die. My, he, this guy's death was a shock to everybody because he, he took care of himself. He was an athlete, he was a runner, he watched his diet. He ended up getting killed in a gluten-free car accident. <laughs> Out of nowhere. So heads up, you can have all the veggie smoothies you want. You still get hit by a dump truck. It's out there. You never know how you're gonna die. I don't wanna die of that either. I don't know, no one knows what happens when you die. I dug graves in a cemetery when I was 22 and I never found anything out. I did, that was a real job that I had. I got the job by accident. I was, I was, uh, I was living next to a, to a pet store. I walked into the pet store, I said, are you guys hiring? And he goes, no, but the guy who owns the pet store, he runs all the cemeteries, he needs grave diggers. I was like, he needs what? <laughs> There's the job description in the title right there. <laughs> Fuck it, let's go, we're digging graves now. 10 bucks an hour, I'm 22. I learned a lot of shit. I didn't learn anything about what happens on the other side, but I did learn a lot of shit. Like, uh, there's these, com these commercials that come on TV that try to scare you, like funerals can be expensive. They can cost you up to $10,000. No, it doesn't. That's free. You, somebody else pays that. You don't have to pay that at all. It's free to die. It's a free experience. It's a free experience. Don't worry, just, just breathe easy. I can't afford my own funeral. Nobody can. Nobody can. 
And we had to dig people up too. Like my boss said, show up early on Monday, we got an exhuming. I had to look at that word up, like what is exhuming? He's like, people have their dead family members dug up and moved to another place in the world. Yeah, I was just as surprised as you are. That's even more expensive. So it's, it's $10,000 to be buried, and it's $20,000 to be dug up by me and a dude with an insane clown posse tattoo. <laughs> and a sleeveless shirt and a shovel. You can have that done. <laughs> I don't want to die, man. <laughs> what happens after you die? Nobody knows. Everybody wants to, people want to know. It's very curious. That's why people do the mini deaths. People are into the... The mini death, that's why they do ayahuasca. Okay, a couple claps for ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is like, a, it's like an ancient plant ceremony down in the rainforest. And uh, a lot of Americans have been going down there and uh, to try to attain, obtain enlightenment. You know, they go down there, they, it's a ceremony. I'm so enlightened to come back. I got a buddy trying to get me to do ayahuasca. He's like, dude, I'll book a flight. We're gonna go down to Peru. We're gonna go down the rainforest. We're gonna get in a kayak and go up the Amazon River. We're gonna go see a shaman. We do the ceremony, drink the brew, stay up all night, dig a hole and shit in it. It's enlightenment, you're gonna like it. <laughs> like, don't be afraid of the ceremony. Don't be afraid of the shaman. I'm like, I'm not afraid of the shaman or the ceremony. I'm afraid of the rainforest. <laughs> what? I'm not going to the rainforest. I'm taking my skinny, bald, Irish ass down to the rainforest. The bugs know I'm gonna be there. They can smell it pheromonally. They know I'm there. <laughs> you got crazy, but all kinds of ants and bugs and crawl in your brain while you're sleeping. Big bats and spiders. I'm not trying to get eaten dick first by a tarantula, you know? <laughs> If I want enlightenment, I'm staying here. I'm gonna take a bong hit by the dryer. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stay in here. There's no bugs. A couple bugs. Come on, that rainforest. I'm not doing ayahuasca. I didn't do ayahuasca, but I did smoke DMT. No? You, you, you clap for ayahuasca. Okay. I see how this works. So DMT is the active ingredient in ayahuasca. Look it up. I don't know. I'm not a fucking scientist. It's the, it's the active ingredient in, in ayahuasca, and it's a smokable version. You don't, have to, you don't have to drink the brew with the scary shaman. So it's smokable. It doesn't last very long, and I do this stuff with my buddy. We smoke it in his apartment. It doesn't last very long, but it teaches you like thousands of years of information in like five minutes. Comes at you quick. So I smoke this stuff with my buddy, and off I go. I transcend space and time. I went backwards across the ocean. I saw my parents before they were born and their parents before them. It was one of the most profound experiences of my, my whole life. And uh, I exhaled, I stood up, and, and there I am in my new skin. And then I get a call from Sprint. <laughs> Customer service care. They're like, you need to pay your phone bill or we're gonna shut your shit off. What are you doing? I'm like, I don't have it right now. I don't have it. I don't have it. I had to set up a payment, payment extension like as I'm coming down off DMT. So I'm, she's asking me questions. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I can hear every click of her keyboard. And after we're all done, she goes, Mr. Jameson, is there, is there anything else we can help you with today? And I said, yeah. Do you think we have free will? <laughs> Do you think that DNA has consciousness? And that we're all one big fabric of the, never mind. Can you call me back at another time? Thank you. And then I dropped my phone and all the texts and pictures just like slid across the floor. <laughs> and fractals, unbelievable. DMT, check it out. <laughs> and then I broke my phone. I had to, I, the phone shattered. No more phone. 
And I had to switch to an old phone. You ever have to do that? You find an old phone somewhere? Like, I, got, I don't need that phone. I got a backup, you know? Plug an old phone from like 10 years ago. You haven't, you, you, it's like a window into your old life, isn't it? You plug it in. Okay, we turn it on. There's all your voicemails and texts from people you don't talk to anymore. Like texts like, are you still up? Wouldn't it be crazy if you just picked up where you left off of that? Like, yeah, I'm still up. It's been at least 10 years. I live somewhere else now. I'm still down to, are we hooking up? I know you have a family and a husband and everything. <laughs> so silly. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate you watching my giant bald head just try to grow hair. Just trying to grow hair. Oh my God, I put, the, I put the one guard on it for you guys tonight, the one guard. Cause I can't like shave my head all the way cause I look like a fucking Nazi. And that's not the look I'm going, it's like my, I'm not a Nazi, my hair just sucks. I gotta keep it short. I know I could grow my hair out really long like on the sides, it grows out really good. I could look like fucking Bozo the Clown. And I know that would make me funnier, but I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it, no. No way. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to look cool. That would suck if I tried to look cool doing this shit. Like, came out all fucking, yeah. You guys would be like, what a fucking loser. <laughs> I don't watch the news. I really, I don't watch the news. I don't, I don't care. I don't fucking, I don't give a shit. I don't, all that news, all the paper. I don't read the paper. I don't read websites. Don't send me a documentary. I'm not watching that. I don't care. I don't fucking care. I want to drive that point out. It feels so good to just say that. <laughs> just the news is just trying to scare you. That's all it is. Just, 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 just fear, 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 fear. That's it. I saw the cover of the Daily News like two weeks ago. It just said, wave of fear. <laughs> See that on my way out of 7-Eleven. Okay, the wave of fear. Watch out for the wave of fear. <laughs> These are the three things you need to know for your day. No, I don't. I don't need to know none of that shit. Why do I need to know that? Why do I need to know these three things that you know? It's always the, the, the sports score is the first thing they need. I know the sports score. I know the f baseball score. I got it on my phone. I got it. And then the other two stories are just stories I'm just supposed to take on my day with me. FBI busts Russian spy house in Maryland. Oh, good. That's good. Good. We don't want spying Russians in here, that's good. God forbid. Why? Why, is, why are like average citizens informed of like the FBI busting up the spy? What do you want me to do about it? It's just an average citizen, you want me to take care of the Russians? I grew up by the airport. I've been drinking tap water my whole life. What do you want me to do, go knock on the door? Hey, get out of here, you Russian spies. I know you're in there, go on, get it. <laughs> go on, get out of here, quit spying. I read the paper, I know. <laughs> A wave of fear. These are the three things you need to know. I don't need to know. The last article is always like, hot air balloon crash kills two in Texas. <laughs> Now I just have that with my day. I, we have the 911 call. I'm not interested. What are you doing getting in a hot air balloon anyways? Well, it's not safe. Hey, let's get in a wicker basket with a propane grill attached to it. Are you free on Saturday? We'll bring some snacks. We'll tie a bed sheet to it. We'll go up into the sky. Are you free? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Everything. Hot air, hot air balloons are the fastest way into the power lines. That's the fastest way to the 911 call. It is. Quickest way in. <laughs> Just trying to scare you all the fear. Watch out for the wave of fear, okay, would you? Just trying to scare you. And it's scary enough being a human being. It's just scary. You, you ever have scary thoughts that linger around? Scary thoughts that 
They're not supposed to be yours, but they still kind of go in your brain. <laughs> scary thoughts at inopportune times. Here's a scary thought. What if I haven't hit rock bottom yet? <laughs> That's a tough one to have, I understand. It's a tough one to have, I had that today. It's always like a night like, th like this, where it's a, it's, it's a beautiful night, we're all hanging out, we're having a good time, we're drinking, you're with your friends, and it's time to go to the bathroom. Excuse me, I had to go to the bathroom. You go, off you go to the bathroom, and, and, and there you are, like, all by yourself, peeing in the toilet, hopefully in the toilet. <laughs> and as the pee hits the water, you just have, a, you have that thought, like, I am all alone. <laughs> I've always been alone, and I'm gonna die alone. And then you pop out of the bathroom, act like you weren't thinking any of that shit. Hey, I'm good, I'm good, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, it's fine, they had granite in the, yeah, it was nice, nice bathroom. Nice bathroom. <laughs> scary thoughts happen. I'll take the scary thought. I just don't wanna become boring. I don't wanna be, that's my goal in life. I just don't wanna be boring big fear of mine. I just don't want to be, I don't want to be the guy like telling everybody he ran a 10K. <laughs> you know? I ran a 10K this week. Oh yeah, you did? <laughs> I ran a 10K and uh, the wind really picked up at mile five. Oh, did it? Oh my, holy shit, did it really? <laughs> and that's the highlight of my week? I don't want that. I got a neighbor who's like training for a warrior dash. He's doing like a mud run or a Spartan race or something. Training for the warrior dash on stack. You're not a warrior. You work in an office. You're just gonna get hurt. <laughs> I don't wanna be boring. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be standing around at a, at a brewery tour, like going to see how beer is made, you know, going on a brewery tour. Let's go find out how beer is made. Oh my God, brewery tours are so boring. I went on a brewery tour once, I'll never get that time back. Just not enough ingredients to make a brewery tour interesting. You know, just the ingredients of beer is like hops, yeast, and water. Oh, cool. Three rooms. You're watching a whole fermenting process. You just go in, this is where we keep the hops. Hops are right here. Okay. <laughs> Guy pulls out like a, ba a box of hops. You want to smell that? The, it smells like ocean pine. No, I don't. Get your fingers out of my face. I don't want to smell that. This is where we keep the, the water. The water comes in here. We add that to the, the hops. <sighs> okay. And then you want to go to see the yeast room? I'm like, no, I want to get drunk. I want to skip to the sampling part. That's why I didn't tour the Pepsi facility. I want to I wanna get drunk. Now that you've wasted everybody's time, I want to get drunk. And then the, he lines up the bottles as you're, as you're there at the sampling part. You can tell, and the guy's like leaning in. You can tell the oatmeal stout, the nose has complexity, right? All right, dude. All right, dude. Is there going to be a 10K after this? Or what, what, what are we doing? Oh my God, what are we doing? I got a brother that lives in, uh, he lives in Oregon and, and, and pot is, is legal in certain, certain states like Washington State, California, Oregon. He lives in Oregon, he lives right next to a dispensary. So he, uh, he's always bragging about the kinds of weed he gets out there, you know, to me. He's like, oh dude, out here we, we know what we're getting, you know, indica, sativa, I, shit for headaches. Whereas here on the East Coast, you just pick up the weed. <laughs> That's what you have access to. You just go over to some guy's apartment, he's got something called Diesel Dank. Oh, he's got, he's got something called Night School. Oh, he's got Night School, oh, that's nice. He doesn't know the species name or not, he's the most uninformed guy ever. That'd be like if you were selling puppies right outside here, out front, and you had no idea what you are talking about. You just like, hey man, I got some spotties and some brown heads. You interested? 
What? Spotties and brownheads? That's a, that's a Dalmatian. That's a beagle. It's not a brownhead. <laughs> brown head at all. <laughs> what a silly fucking joke that is. Oh my god. Surprised that works. Spotties and brown heads, huh? All right. Gotta have a dog. Everybody's got a dog. Gotta have a dog, right? You gotta have a dog. Everyone's got a dog, I bet, in here. Not right now. Not in here. Yeah, right now he's at home in a cage barking at the thunderstorm. He's constipated. I know. You love your dog. Does he love you? I don't know. He's bred that way. We're not sure. <laughs> gotta have a dog. It just, you gotta have a dog. You, it feels good to have somebody dumber than you are around the house, doesn't it? It feels good. Come on, don't pee on that. That's the only way you're gonna get to the park, because you would never go to the park in the middle of the day and just stand there alone with your thoughts. No, you need a dog there with you. Come on, don't pee on that. <laughs> people feed their dogs the most insane things in every pet store there's like a there's like an artisanal dog treat section with like a reach in bin with clips and there's donuts and cupcakes with little dog bones on them that's not what a dog eats he doesn't eat that you know what a dog's favorite dessert is a baby rabbit's blood and feces that's what a dog <laughs> Get him that. Pick him up an injured chicken on the way home if you could. He would see what he does with that. Your dog is gonna eat the ass end of a moose, okay, on the side of a misty mountain. That's what you're. That's what kind of animal you have. If you care about your dog, make him a blood popsicle if you could. <laughs> Look it up on YouTube. There's blood popsicle. He will love it. I got a lot of uh, musician friends. I used to be a musician and now I'm doing this shit. Not hiding behind my guitar, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I got friends that still, they're still musicians, they're great guys. That, one friend, is a, he's a jazz musician. He invites me to a show. And uh, he's a great dude, he's a great musician. And we get tickets to the show, we go to the show, and sit front row, and it's great, but I don't like jazz. I don't, I don't understand jazz. Jazz doesn't work for me. It doesn't make sense in my, in my head, you know? Jazz is just like structureless music. There's no organization to it. It's just like a guitar lick here, and a horn here, and the drummer sounds like a dick. He really does. The drummer sounds like a dick. What is this song? You would never make a, a jazz sandwich for somebody. <laughs> ah, what am I eating here? Oh, it's a sausage patty on a blueberry panini, onion vinaigrette, shredded wheat, Skittles, and a pumpkin pie crust upside down with a birthday candle on it. It's jazz. <laughs> Do you like it? No. Maybe you just don't get it. But it's jazz. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so angry about jazz. I don't know, I apologize. I don't know why I'm so angry. I went and saw an acupuncturist because of, of the anger, you know? <laughs> you know? I went, I went to acupuncture uh, assuming that would work and uh, the guy, like before we got started, he, he has this talk with me and he says, uh, listen, Arch, I want you to remember that, that anger requires more energy. It requires more energy to be angry. I'm like, yeah, man, I, I have a lot of energy, so I can maintain a lifetime of anger. It's not a problem. My family did it, my grandfather did it. It's fine. He wants to know how I'm sleeping. He's like, uh, are you getting perfect sleep? Are you sleeping through the night? I guess so. Here's a great way to get perfect sleep. I want you to get perfect rapid eye movement sleep, he says. I want you to black out the windows. I want you to put an eye mask on. And I want you to put earplugs in when you're sleeping. It's a great way to get perfect sleep. I'm like, that sounds like a great way to die in an apartment fire. <laughs> it's 
sir. That sounds like a great way to have all my shit stolen in the middle of the night while I'm getting perfect sleep. Not doing that. I'm not doing that. And after we get done, he's like, do you, do you mind if I do some, some chakra reading, some energy chakra reading? He's kind of a hippie dude. I'm, like, I'm into that shit. Yeah, let's read the chakras. Okay, so he's got his hand on my head, and I'm quiet. He's quiet. He doesn't say anything for like a minute. I can hear him breathing. And then he goes, I can tell you're a very sad man. I can tell that you live all alone on an island by yourself. An island that you've built yourself. An island, I'm like, dude, can you just fix my neck? Can we go back to the, I'm having a rough week. I don't need energy readings right now, I'm good. I'm, I'm busy living on the island by myself. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I saw a, uh, one of those like crazy Christian people signs. And it was on, it was in front of a church. You see these signs, you know, sometimes they're informative. Sometimes they're not. This one just said, you can't hold hands with God while you're masturbating. And I looked at that and I thought, sure you can. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.